Today, we're going to hang a door. Um, it's, um, uh, the doors have been salvaged and stripped. They were too small for the opening, so we've made them up with strips around the outside. Um, and obviously the lock position gets changed. So I'll start that age to put a new lock on. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, the opening is an existing opening. As I said, the doors are salvaged, so they've probably got a twist on them. It's going to be a challenge. Useful tools, or tools that you're going to need. I like to hold my door in a piece of 4x2 wedge, like so. And that holds the door. To lift the door, the same thing again, a wedge. You can put your foot on there and that will lift the door. Hold the door in place with a couple of wooden wedges. Then, Fine plane and a smooth in plane. Hammer, mallet, nice set of chisels and a slip stone. Chisels do need to be sharp. The first thing that we want to do is to offer the door frame up, the door up to the frame and see how it's going to fit, see what we've got to do um, to get it to fit. Um, I'm looking to get this edge and that top to match that. Give me some idea what I want to take off the top. I use a compass with the knee with the pin a lot forward of the point. That'll give me some idea of what's needed to come off. Only roughly. And that's going to show I'm going to mark it a little bit there. The same on the bottom. A little bit there. This is my uh, invention holding the door up. That's how I work on it. Um, and we always do the end grind first. You can use your smoothing plane or a jack plane. As long as they're sharp, I personally like a power plane, but it's sharp. Make sure that lead is out of the way. Over the shoulders better. If you're looking to take off um, a weird shaped piece, then you just keep running the plane out shorter and shorter each time. Drop it down to the floor. Whilst we're doing, I'll check what we're doing. Oh, this again is tape this end, tape with that. End. Let's do that end. So we do a short one. There we go. And the same the other end. One for you with. Keep showing you the same old thing. But uh, we shot, as we said, a little bit off there, bit off there, bit off there, bit off there, bit off there. In theory, that should go in the hole, except for the fact that it has got a threshold, and this bore will go up against the threshold. What I've got to do now is cut the bottom off to suit the bottom or plane the top. So I'll need, need to lift that. This is where our little leafery stick comes in again. Under there. Leave that up. There we go. And then we'll put a wedge in there to hold it in place. One more one. One more on the other side. Let's have a look. Opposite that one. Let it stay there. Oh, there we go. Have a look. That's not bad at all, it's just a little bit off of there, but the gap through the top there is, is what we want. Clean the sides. That looks like that's going to fit a little bit off the bottom there. And that's all look that all looks good. Right, 
So the next thing then is, I've got a piece of timber that is the measure of the carpet and underlay. And that's our next thing, is to mark that along the bottom, just put it on the flooring, and I'll cut that, cut that to suit. There we go, so my next job now is, and I'll cut the bottom off. So if you've got to cut that amount off, we're leaving that line in by the way, um, it's probably better to plane it, but we'll cut the end grain first with the saw. If not, a power saw would do it, um, but because I'm doing this for DIY, I'm trying to avoid using power tools as a, uh, as a first option. Power plane, phew, well, dead worth it. But after that, I think we'll stick with hand tools. Okay, so I just have to cut the end grain. across the grain and also all the grit and abrasive material is in the end grain. So if you're going to do your planer in, it's the end grain that does it. Now I could just carry on and cut up the end, um, but I'm going to use the power plane. So. And I've left three mil beyond. That should fit the off cut off the bottom of the door, if I put it where the door's going to go, it is proud of the frame. So unfortunately, I've got to take the door stops off. So, I'll show you how I do that. I did say this is going to be one of the more difficult ones. Right, a good sharp blade, and just break the paint. That's going to have to go as well. The, the other side, I think this one's alright. But we'll check that. That one looks like it came off last time. And that's not too bad at all. Ah, we've got a little bit there though. A little paint's coming away. There we go. I should have done the top first, shouldn't I? So wait, I'm going to leave them nails there for a minute because I don't want the door going all the way in. We come down six. And we come up nine. A few Americans watching. That's an English nine and an English six. I don't know if an American nine's the same. I'm sure you'll tell me. Then we're going to use a different way of using the uh, standoff hinges here because we want this door to go right back against the wall. So mark both sides so you're marking the door and the frame. So same on the bottom. All we've got to do now, cut that. When you're using standoffs, um, you know the size of your architrave. The standoff, if you were to put this part of the to the door, the standoff will be the total of that. Well, you don't need all of that. Um, so it's it's wise, I think, is to put the put it slightly slightly more into the door, and then in the frame you match it. So wherever this comes on the door, you make the same on the frame. 
if you turn the hinge down like that, that keeps it square. I'm going to suggest for the minute I'm going to come two millimeter in, two millimeters in, or just under an eighth of an inch, and mark it so. And I will do exactly the same on the frame. At this point, I can show you how I've done it on another door for an ordinary hinge. So we've come down six from the top. And what you do now is set the hinge to 90 degrees. We do different hinges. In this case, one of the flags is it, it goes all the way into the circle. The other one's got um, a gap. It doesn't matter too much which way around it's set for one side when you put it in it butts against the door and all you've got to do then is say down six inches or 150 just mark it with a standing knife or a pencil don't matter which that's it and do the same for the other end but of course if you've got a nice sharp fiddle, which hopefully I have, that's all you need. And the method is, or you can actually get a machine that you can use, or you can do it by router. But as this is DIY, I'm going to show you how I'll do it with a chisel. If it, um, if it hinges close to the outside of the door, as this one is, because I'm going in a little bit than I normally would, um, you need to be careful that you're not going to split this bit of the door away. Make sure it's nice and square, nice and neat. And then, the top of the hinge, you can if you wish, do one slip along there, which is what it will show you in textbook. And that way, you can at least see that you've got an, an even cut an even depth cut along that edge but I find like that is all you need right well, it's getting boring now there we go Beep, 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 beep. Now then, by doing that little twisting action like that, you can follow that all the way along. And finally use your eye. You're going to go down just the depth. Next is pilot holes. Mark this hinge in much the same way as you did the um, the other hinge. Remembering the course to add this offset, the same as on the door, and then pencil mark. Right, then we'll cut that out in the same fashion. Even gap all round. 
you can see the gap is probably about two millimeter across the top is even just a couple of millimeter and the same down as I was saying this is the standoff hinge like so